All right, I'll call the Crow Wing County Committee of the Whole meeting for August 17th, 2021 to order. Our first order of business today is an update on the Parks and Trails Plan presented by Mr. Griffin and Mr. Simonson. The floor is yours. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, today we really wanted to have a discussion about potentially where you would like to see us go with um, updating the uh, Comprehensive Recreation Trails Plan. Uh, we've had conversations uh, with uh, Commissioner Barrows uh, specifically on this in the past and you know we have reviewed it thoroughly a couple of times we think there are definitely some areas that need to be updated but just kind of wanted to receive some direction from the board as to how extensive or if at all uh, you wanted to see any um, updates to uh, the plan uh, what I handed you here were just maybe some potential options real brief and we can talk about these as we go through on uh, the full gamut of a, what is what is a full comprehensive review of the comprehensive plan uh, to um, more of a more of a brief or internal update to or anything in between that you guys maybe were thinking we uh, should or could do um, so with that uh, I did want to highlight um, I didn't you know send all the plans plan to you guys but that um, there are some things in the plan I believe that we maybe should highlight like you know we really do a good job uh, with sponsorship and and we work at a, in a, J, a JPA with Big Island but not really um, mentioned too much in this plan I also think we sponsor or support our local biking community uh, especially over in Crosby not really called out but I think those are some good things we also now support um, you know ski grooming not really called out in the plan and I just think those are good highlights to be clear for anybody that reads it what are some of those other things that Crow Wing County uh, does in support if not direct uh, management of, of some of these trails um, so I wanted to lead with some of the things that I think it might be lacking. But some really good things that are in this plan is before we had a plan in 2012, my understanding was somebody would come in and say, I want a trail. Well, okay, let's go make you one. Um, and it could be for multiple u different uses. Uh, but with the, with the 2012 creation of the comp plan for trails, there's a really good um, process for if somebody identified or wished to, to have a trail somewhere, there's a great process. I kind of printed it and handed it to you on the back, a little step-by-step, -step, so that there's some um, organization and something to follow, not only for staff, but then expectations of a club or a city. If somebody you know wanted to do that, they had clear expectations on what they would need to have um, to create another trail and then the discussions on who's going to be liable um, for maintenance and ongoing expense that might be occurred with it um, environmental impacts um, is it is the area proposed even suitable for a trail all those types of things so I, I think in the trails plan it lays that out very very well um, but with that uh, your options we could do a full review um, as number one we also thought maybe number two we could you know it really needs to identify or I think better lay out our vision for our parks you know I, I know you guys know we have three main parks we technically have five county parks three that we actively maintain all summer long uh, with our environmental technicians now which I'd like to touch on later um, and then we have Big Island uh, that is a J JPA that mainly ideal acts as the finance, uh, financial financial um, uh, uh, agent and then you have volunteers that help cut firewood and stuff out there and then we have an island over on Rush Lake that's kind of um, I want to say rustic or primitive not there is a little trail up in there um, not a lot that's been done to that don't know what previous discussions are um, but you know we really haven't done anything with that the signs pretty dilapidated we may want to do something there um, 
I'm waiting for somebody to say they maybe want to take a boat ride out there and, and look at that one. You know, that could be, that'd be kind of a nice little field trip for you if you wanted to. Just suggestion to get you out of the office once in a while. But, um, so we have, uh, we had uh, those three parks and then it's not really well laid out on what kind of maintenance or overall, where are we going with those parks? And I, my suggestion to the board is that we really do write down and commit to having really well maintained, clean parks for um, our visitors and, and, and folks to uh, enjoy. I think sometimes that's just overlooked. And I think by making that commitment, that could be really um, clear to staff what one of our missions and goals are when it comes to those parks. You know, it's, oh, there's a park, let's create it. What do you do once, you know, the grand opening's over? you know, and you kind of get into uh, the day-to-day -day upkeep of the stuff. Um, and then you have, uh, uh, with that number two, uh, we also, if you wanted to, this is where I think you guys really could help us. How far do you want to go with a public comment or solicitation on um, where do we want to go with the plan? The plan has some really good stuff in it. Um, do you want to open this up um, for a full comment period to the public? Do you want to go to the groups that we already um, do sponsorship with? Uh, we have an NRAC committee. We could take suggestions there. Uh, we could do, when this was created, there was an advisory committee. So there's a whole gamut of, of options that you could have um, to solicit feedback on. Is there um, any you know different direction that you want to go with this plan? Um, the third option is more of an internal update. I mentioned uh, uh, there's uh, some parks, uh, things that could be really added. I think we could clean up the trail monitoring process. My suggestion would be something like we, um, we move forward with an environmental services technician that is um, uh, in collaboration with our landfill um, duties out at the landfill. and. We developed a really great monitoring checklist and maintenance um, uh, uh, page for our staff that covers exactly what they look at and fix or clean and, <coughs> and reports back to Ryan. And what we'd like to do is flow, you know, summarize that at least in an annual report on how much maintenance activities, as much as we can as far as how many people visited these parks it's, it, we, we went to the last uh, NRAC committee and we had um, as much data as we had on how many vehicles that we believe stopped in the parks and that seemed to be very well received by most of the commissioners that I had heard from. So seeing if we can bolster how to continue to capture that data on how many people are using not only the parks but all those trails, maybe something at the boat accesses too, so we can get, all, you know, we do a really robust job out there. Can we get some robust data to, to support all those activities? And are we putting our um, priorities at the, at the right, um, in the right order? Uh, let's see, um, and, or of course I have to throw this on here. You guys can do nothing. It's working, I think, well. I think there definitely are some improvements we can do, but at the same time, not saying that it's broken. It's just that it is. It was. It was created in 2012, um, and it did call out that you know try to update as needed. And maybe we look at this one as more of like we we went through a couple of times changes with the land asset management policy, and maybe this is more kind of along those lines where we try to commit to more of an annual or biannual you know, look and update to bring to you for some suggestions so it maybe doesn't get so maybe long in the tooth. So that was my, my opening. I um, did want to, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, if you haven't stopped out at the fire tower, everything that we currently plan to do um, with the, the original 40 acres is totally completed now. Fine. So everything that, every sign, uh, trail, Parking lot, fencing, um, I believe is totally complete. So, and it's, you know, we had a great grand opening with the pavilion and stuff, but all the fire um, history displays and stuff are up. Sassy the bear, uh, you know, they talk about their, her on one of the 
posters, so some neat stuff. Um, so I encourage you, if you get a chance, to stop out there again. It looks, um, looks different, but I, I think it's, it's been well improved. Are we still seeing heavy traffic there? Uh, absolutely, very, very uh, heavy. I'll just comment, I was out there two weekends ago um, when I was up at the fire tower. Uh, there must have been 20 people waiting to go up, you know, and, and they just kept coming, you know, and I'm glad we did put um, four or five benches up there because it was all full. Uh, parking lot was three quarters full when we went back to the truck, um, and that's just the uh, one Saturday I was there, but um, maintenance, Garbage is pretty well full. Bathroom needs to be regularly cleaned, so it's getting some really good heavy use. Was a doing off the pavilions being used in that at all? I don't know for sure. Um, when I was out there, I did see that the grills were pretty clean, so I, I, I couldn't okay. quite make that if they if it was or wasn't. Okay. Yes. So going back to, so I, I have a question, and a couple years ago, the board approved side-by-sides and ATVs on roadways or on the shoulders. What, what are we seeing as an impact there? Are, you know, I see a lot of them out there, of course we see the golf carts in some of the communities too, and, and those generally have wider shoulders available to them. But on our roadways, our county roads where the shoulders aren't so wide. Is that a problem? To my knowledge, uh, Commissioner Barrels, I have not heard of an accident, whether it was because the four-wheeler, or ATV, I should say, excuse me, side-by-side, side, uh, was struck by a, a, a car because it was up on the roadway, or that somebody flipped their um, vehicle because it was maybe straddling, you know, two on the dirt, two on the tar. To my knowledge, I haven't heard that that's either happened. If it has, it, I, I'm unaware, but it, it hasn't seemed to be um, uh, a huge problem from my vantage point, but I, I don't know. And I haven't seen any in the paper either. It's more off trail or, or off roadway and they run into a tree or flip in a ditch or something, but it's not necessarily up on the roadway. Are you working at all with Tim on future shoulders? on some county roads? We, we are not. Uh, we haven't had any discussions on that. The, the ATV up on county highways would drive the additional cost for wider shoulders. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had those discussions. Doesn't mean we can't, but uh, I don't believe that's in his um, development plan as far as when he's reconstructing or uh, delivering a roadway. I would agree with you because I think his development plan is based on safety in the drive lanes, not necessarily worrying about bicyclists or ATVs on the shoulders. Um, not that he doesn't consider that, it just isn't as high a priority as the drive lanes. So I think that that's an opportunity that could be explored. I know, Ryan, you have an overlay of, of I think, of what mm -hmm. past organizations would like to see for wider shoulders than that and when the opportunity presents itself and that's a long-term look at road development because it does cost more money but I think it's an opportunity that should be um, continued with Tim or at least get to a higher priority with him when it when the opportunity is there I know it was at 145 up north where you know they come in and they want us to hold back on a, on a mill and overlay so they could have wider shoulders. Now that road doesn't rise to a high priority in my mind, but there are other places where we could look at wider shoulders if it presents itself and if the dollars are there. But unless we look 20 years out in the dollars with Tim, we're not gonna be in the ball game ever. So to me, then it doesn't make any sense to have an overlay that says, yeah, we'd like to have wider shoulders on county road, whatever, and we haven't done our due diligence to make sure that the dollars will be there at some point. So I think that's, an, again, an opportunity that, that could be looked at. The, do I think that it needs, when I, when I read the plan that you folks have, 
I guess I don't see where it needs to be overhauled 100%. I, I don't see a need for that. So getting a contractor or, or consultant to come in, I don't see that as, as necessary myself. I don't know what the other commissioners feel. And just, I, I didn't mention, but uh, Commissioner Coring is, com is coming in by teams. So Commissioner, if you have anything to say, just speak up and we'll, we'll get you heard. I don't know what the, uh, what the rest of you feel if we go to, I'll just stop for a second here and then let them weigh in too as far as. He's blinking. Future. <laughs> Commissioner Coring, did you want to say something? Nothing right now, uh, oh. Mr. Chair. Okay. Do any of the rest of you want to speak to what I'm looking at is planning out so that highway and parks have an opportunity to work together? Administrator Houle. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, one thing I think that you should at minimum hope to get out of this process, and I appreciate Commissioner Barrows, you talking about the conflicts between ATVs, golf carts, and roads. That's an issue. And you're calling that out as something that you see as a potential conflict that you want good planning around. That's what I hear. Right. Any other issues that you know of or hear of that you want us to, okay, we want to make sure you focus on this. That would be helpful to us. So if you have any of those other ones, something I would like to see come out of that plan would be a five-year capital plan. What are the improvements that you want to make to your parks? It can be none. That's okay. It's just to have that five-year forward look of what are we, what do we want to see as improvements? That could be to recreational trails, but mostly we let the clubs drive that process. So I'm focused more on the parks. What do you want to see? And I think, Commissioner Barrows, that was where maybe we started this discussion was looking at the capital investments we were going to make in the parks and feeling maybe like you didn't have enough of a conversation about it. Think about solid waste for just a second. We know the volumes that come in. We know the volumes that go out. We have a plan for the construction of the next cell. We save money in advance in order to construct the cell. We have a plan for our fleet. We know when we're going to replace the vehicles. We have a plan for IT. We know when we're going to replace computers. The plan drives the CIP. And when the plans drive the CIP, you guys are in the loop because of the plan. So the five-year um, road construction plan for the highway department is an example of that five-year planning of a CIP. And there's no surprises for you guys. You know where you're going. You're involved in that process. So at a minimum, that's what I would like to see come out of this plan, is a five-year capital plan for your parks. And, and I would agree with that, and thank you, Administrator Houle, because I, I do see, and, and Gary, you and I have talked about other opportunities that we don't even know about out there, you know, historical, whatever. We don't, we don't see a lot over on the east side of the county that we're looking at, you know, other than the mine area, you know, and that's a great opportunity also. But when you think of Garrison and down in that area, we don't see a lot. The Fort Ripley area, we don't see a lot at this point. So there, there might be opportunities that I'm not even aware of, whether they're historical or whether they're just great places. You think of South Long Lake where it was a landing and we looked at it and we developed a, a beautiful park down there. So I think there might be some other opportunities, but I think that should be part of the five year strategic plan or a 10 year piece that should be in this plan. And that does allow us then to look at how we will develop it. It also looks at our current parks and how we maybe want to add things to those. You know, we're going to have additional acreage up there at the fire tower. And so that should be part of a plan that takes five years out. That's a challenge because we use money that has to be spent in a current year to do some of those things, but it still should be part of a plan. Mm -hmm. So we know what's going to happen. And we should, you know, I always think we should be looking at our current parks and, and seeing if they're really meeting the needs of the people that use them and that they aren't deficient in that way, but also that, that we can maintain because we need to make sure that we're not getting too robust and creating a Taj Mahal when we don't really need a Taj Mahal, but we want to make sure that we have the quality and 
what I consider as a signature park for Crow Wing County so that if they drive into Aiken County or they drive into Itasca County, they know they're in a different county because we have a standard that we set for cleanliness, for maintenance, that is unique or very understood in Crow Wing County. And, and I think you've done that with the shelters that are out there and the, you know, the other amenities that we, you've put in place. And so it's consistent across the county and I applaud you for that. I think that's uh, finding those shelters I think was a great idea. And you know, even Steve Barrows might be able to put one of those together if they come with the right directions. But it, pretty easy to put up, pretty quick to put up, you know, let the cement dry and throw them up. So I applaud you for that, and, I, and it's consistent across the county. I think that's important that we make that statement. And I'm the only one rattling on here, so if other commissioners would please weigh in, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Commissioner Coring. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I mean, you've kind of covered all the ground from whether we, we need them or, or if we create a Taj Mahal that we don't need. And that, that's where I'm coming from is, I just hope that we're not going to get carried away and and think that, uh, you know, in a plan that says, oh, we need uh, 10 more uh, county parks. I would point out the fact that down in St. Matthias, where I grew up my entire life, that community created their own park of 120 acres, all by volunteerism, all by pull tabs, raising the money, uh, fundraisers. They, they created their own park. Uh, of 120 acres. Also, when you go down to Fort Ripley, uh, Fort Ripley, the city of Fort Ripley, they actually have their own park there. There's a ball diamond there where the, the Fort Ripley baseball team plays. If you've been out to Garrison too, which you mentioned, there is actually a nice uh, city park out there. So I, I just don't want us to get too carried away and think that we, um, that our plan is to, more county parks i think we can be over parked too um so i just don't i just i think we should just kind of do a good job on what we have we can go to this croft uh park and look at that i'm not really that excited about taking that over uh with all due respect to commissioner hogue um i just i'm not really that excited about it but we, we can go look at it and, and hear their proposal but I, I think that actually should be the city of Crosby taking a look at that rather than us doing it. But um, I, I just think we need to move forward. We got, we got three parks. Let's do a good job on those. I, I mean, I hope you're, I'm hope nobody's advocating, you know, a, a list of 10 more parks. Cause if you think about it, every city's got their own parks. And anyway, enough said, I'm kind of rambling on too, so. Well, and Commissioner Coring, I, I agree with you. I, you know, the cities have done a, a great job, and I think some of the townships have done some great work also exactly. in that area. So I'm not advocating for us to go out and find these. I just think if there's opportunities that come up that they should be considered, but I think that we need to take kind of a conservative approach to it. But we should have a plan to how we would address it going forward if that opportunity should rear its head for us. So. That, that would be my position. Commissioner. Yeah, I, I think to, to tag along with that, we do have a process that we use for trails, um, w which works good. Do, do, is there some type of process we should create for parks that, that have certain criteria that we, you know, check this, check this, to, before we get too uh, crazy about creating parks? I, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out as a, a you know, maybe more of an internal process that we review the same way as we do for trails. I, I don't know. If, if I could, uh, Commissioner Hogue, we did have a, it was an informal proposal for a park over in the town of Manganese. And we were actually going and using our trail application okay. process to just real initial it, it, and kind of customizing some of the questions for the need and what's maybe historically significant before we would have taken that proposal to the, the advisory committee and then eventually to uh, in front of you guys. Uh, but that proposal um, 
seem to be shelved or something at this point, um, the people that wanted it. So we were going to, we, we think that process is so good that we probably can follow it for the most part for a park proposal as well. Um, of course, we can fast track that if the county board wants to park. We don't have to worry about the process then, right? I mean, but um, we, we think it's pretty um, flexible. Okay. Let's put it that way. Mr. Chair, if I, if I can too, weigh in here Correct. a little bit. One is, uh, could you share the, your trails map or, you know, brochure with us, everybody? Oh, yeah. I think that that, you know, that would be helpful so that we kind of see what we're already trying to market and promote. Gotcha. I think that another thing is, is that uh, we need an inventory of the parks that are the county, the cities, and the townships. If, you know, if we're going out there half, you know, saying, hey, we need a park or whatever, I think we should identify all the parks that are there and, and the low areas that there are so that we kind of know that because uh, otherwise we could get into some levels of duplication. The other side, did you say Rush Lake has that island? Yes, on Whitefish. You know, that yeah. would be an opportunity to say, do you partner with somebody like the township? You know, the ideal township is, is assisting with uh, the Raleigh Johnson you know, recreation area. So, you know, maybe there's an area there that we can have some, if we felt we were going down that path, shared cost, shared benefit, because it's going to also benefit them too. I believe that one is the city of Cross Lake where that island is. Is but, it? Okay. You know, you, but, you know, but they yep, may be there. Partner. Rather yep. than us going there and say, hey, we're going to do this, I would think that we'd want them as a, as a partner in it in regards to that cost and, yep. and the yep. benefit they receive. Well, and you keep talking about partners, but if someone is already doing something, I don't want to partner up with them. Exactly. They're taking care of it, and we exactly. could use our resources another place. No, nope, I would agree with you. I have a quick question, Gary, on, on your uh, second page of your presentation. Yep. And it says advisory committee there on number three. And you've made the statement that the advisory committee doesn't exist anymore. Would that be the NRAC committee then, or no, would you? That is the NRAC committee um, uh, step three. Yeah, um, right. The advisory committee that I mentioned earlier was just an uh, advisory committee that created the original uh, comprehensive trail plan that was put together. So, so this so could should actually that just, just say NRAC be reflected committee. as NRAC then rather than yes. advisory committee? Yep. Well, back then there was an advisory committee and then the, the Parks and Trails Advisory Committee combined with the forestry, and that's when NRAC was. Okay. So there was a, a different committee. Okay. At one point. Hmm. Yeah, we can update that. And so Gary asked the question of us about if there was an opportunity, would we want public input on that? And just kind of wondering what the other commissioners think about that or would the NRAC committee be the one you know I think they certainly should be the first ones to address the issue mm -hmm. and then would you are we required to have a public hearing I'm not clear on that we're not administrator who says we're not required so um, uh, Commissioner Coring yeah Mr. Chair I I, uh, I think that all, all five of us actually we're we're representing all the people I, I don't I don't I don't know if I see the need for a public hearing uh, and then we reach out to have our appointees who are citizens uh, like on the NRAC committee and I, I think between the county board and the NRAC committee I I think if there's anything that comes up I I think we can handle it. I don't know. That's just my opinion. And I, and I would agree with that position myself. I, I don't know what the other commissioners feel, but... Oh, I would agree with that. I think we have to make our own decisions. Right. I think when it comes to a park and we're going to spend that, that money and, you know, I think we would do our due diligence. I think the NROC would do, would do all the research for us and, and staff. So I think that we would have plenty of information to determine whether we should enhance a park or we should create a new park and I and I think that is our responsibility to Commissioner Coring's point so Steve I, could I say one other thing sure go ahead uh, I I gotta say I agree with Commissioner Brecken I actually think if some somebody on our staff could take a little time 
and do an inventory of, in essence, kind of the recreational opportunities. And what I, that what I mean by that is parks, uh, you know, and or um, other things, the recreational opportunities in Crow Wing County. Uh, I think that would be kind of imp interesting information for the county board members and for the INRAC committee to see how many parks we have, where they're located, you know, if if we could um, if we could direct Gary and his staff to maybe come up with some of that, I think that might I think that might help us in our future future direction. And Gary, you can make that happen. Yep, you're a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we can we can get the uh, list, and we can also get it on a map. I'm fully confident uh, to display it that way too, so you can kind of you know, um, see it a, a couple different ways. Um, would it be a stretch or could I maybe make a pitch to um, ask if you guys would be supportive of uh, allowing staff to take a um, try at an update just to clean up some of the stuff and lay it out a little bit different way. You kind of tab this thing through parks and trails, our landings, um, you know, we have uh, restroom facilities out there and and you lay out in each one of these tabs what's our goal and how you know and then there's of course a strategy and that vision stuff that might be left a little bit open when you get some more data to maybe you know form your opinion on maybe what you want to see there we could um, bring that back to committee the whole we could start that through um, in rack uh, and then back to a committee of the whole, however you'd like to, but we definitely can do the inventory at the, at, uh, you know, at the same time, too. So this would be in-house, not a consultant? Correct. We just do it in-house. In -house. I don't see a problem with that. I don't either. I Commissioner Coring, you, you'd be okay with the... Oh, yeah. Great okay. idea. Okay, so... Was that you... my idea? <laughs> no, it was Gary's. <laughs> 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 so I think you have some direction there, Gary and Ryan. Would, would you guys like us to go to NRAC and talk to them a little bit about this before we would come back to a, a future Committee of the Whole? Or would you like us to come back here before we would go to NRAC? Um, I think that uh, given our last experience, I would say come to us first and then we'll, if we, if we kind of just wanted agree to with it sure. then it can go to NRAC and they can okay. see what was proposed and and for their input but let's go through us first okay you okay with that Commissioner Coring yeah that sounds good to me okay so plenty of direction for you yes thank you and the very last thing is I just wanted to give you guys an update we're getting closer to closing on that extra land by the fire tower. We need to complete a survey, so we're going to have our, our in-house surveyor go out and do the survey so we can get this split process with the city of Pequot Lakes, so we can get this thing moving closer to closing. Hopefully we can wrap that all up uh, this fall, and the, vi the um, plan would be that execution of new trails and all of that in the spring of 2022. If if we don't have any um, uh, roadblocks with uh, the closing and all that. So just a quick update on that. So you, do you already have kind of a preliminary plan for trails? We do, and we can share that with you, the location of them. Right. Uh, and the, the plan is just that they would be um, tailings on, you know, um, like four, six inches of tailings for the base, and then a gravel trail um, uh, with some granite chip mix in there, similar to what we already have. Great. I think that'll be a nice addition up there. I know that students use that quite a bit, you know, when school's in session and that. So I don't know if the uh, child care people use it, but I would speculate they do. It's a great area to walk up there. So I can't wait to see that happen. Steve, one more quick thing. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, Gary, it, it sounds like you've already got the, how did you, did you have somebody walk through that property already and kind of identify where, where the trails would go? I mean, I'm assuming you, you, you'd go in there and kind of go around any wetlands or anything. So you've kind of done trail development already? 
Yeah, uh, Commissioner Coring, we yeah we followed the same uh, process we did with the original fire tower uh, trails. Uh, Tom Strack um, GPS uh, the actual trail location around. Um, we tried to you know get the least uh, amount of grade that we could out on the trails. So you know if there are some ravines, he was trying to make it work uh, so it can be as um, usable as possible, um, saving as many large trees as we can. Yes, staying out of, I don't believe there's a lot of wet areas there. It's pretty um, uh, dry, but yeah, that's what we, we, we did. And he came up with a really nice um, trail map that we will make sure you, we share with you folks. And if you want something different, by all means, you know, um, you guys are the decision makers. We were just trying to help fast forward it so we, you know, could hit the ground running with um, the trail development. And I, and I would just say in finally that, you know, I've looked at the overlays that Ryan has for some of these trails, whether they're on road, off road, whatever they are, if there's things that you don't get in from them that you want to see, it's a pretty robust overlay that Ryan has available. So don't be afraid to ask for it. He's very accommodating and really has some good overlays. And I thought it was gonna be, a, when I looked at it, it was gonna be a mix of all this in one picture and no, he peels it off and peels it off. And so it's really easy to understand. And so if you want to look at one type of trail, you can, or if you want to look at a, the parks, you can. So very good. And, and Mr. Chair, tell Ryan not to talk so much uh, okay. next time. <laughs> <County Board. laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how he, he passes the, uh, meets the standards or whatever at the end of the year because he doesn't talk, but. <laughs> He gets it done by showing us how to do it. Yeah. If you get him out in the woods, then you, and he, he's, he, you know. He's kind of like E.F. Hutton. When he speaks, everybody listens. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when someone doesn't speak much. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All That's right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks. <laughs> Our second item today is Ms. Thielen from the DNR and an update on their their uh, department. So Ms. Thielen, you're online. I am, can you see me? Can you hear me okay? Well, we see a big circle with a PT in it, so, but we hear you just fine. Okay, I, I have my video on, so I'm not sure why that's not coming through. Um, but uh, I really appreciate your time today. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Patty Thielen. I am DNR's Northeast Regional Director. Um, I've been down there, I visited with the Crow Wing County Board a few years ago, along with uh, our then Commissioner Tom Landwehr. Um, and I'm really glad to be back. I know uh, actually probably have a couple of new commissioners since then. Um, I've been trying to get out and meet with all of the county boards across the Northeastern part of the state that makes up my work area. Uh, of course, things all paused due to COVID. Um, I'm going to bring up a presentation I have here, just a second. I can figure that out. There we go. Okay, you can see the PowerPoint yes. screen? Okay. Um, so again, I had paused these visits due to COVID, but I've, after a while I thought, well, I might as well try to start getting out and do some virtual visits. Um, now we're just starting to do things in person, but uh, I had some other things on my calendar that was gonna make it pretty tough to travel today. So I appreciate being able to meet with you this way. Um, I have worked with your county administrator on a couple of things over the last few years, but again, it's great to be here with the whole board. What I'm hoping to do here today is uh, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just here to introduce myself and tell you about what I do at DNR. I'll share a little bit about DNR in general. Um, you know, a lot of people think of DNR as uh, like my dad did, that guy that gave me a ticket for not having his snowmobile registered. But we do a lot of work besides that. And so I'll just touch on each of our divisions a little bit. 
And then I'll talk about our strategic land asset management program a little bit, or SLAM. Um, I first like, your, me, I like I, your acronym. <laughs> thanks. I didn't come up with it, but I like it too. Um, first me, I've lived and worked in northern Minnesota for about 26 years, but I grew up in the Twin Cities, in the suburbs. Um, I always loved being outside since I was a little kid. And in my 20s, I decided I wanted to get out of the Twin Cities. And I didn't want to go to the cabin uh, like I did with my family. I wanted to live at the cabin. And uh, I stumbled across the College of Natural Resources at the University of Minnesota and studied forest management. And I got a job right away when I graduated. So that was pretty exciting. Um, my first job was in Gadette. And to be honest, that was a little further than I intended to get out of the Twin Cities. Um, and uh, actually, I spent my first fire season back in 1995 in, working out of Brainerd. They used to move us around during our first year to experience different things. And uh, there was a lot more fire around Brainerd in general, uh, except for the two months that I spent there. So. I, I started uh, getting a nickname Asbestos Patty when I was there. Um, I, while, while Bidette was a little further th than I had planned on trying to get from the Twin Cities, uh, I worked there for 15 years. It really grew on me and I learned a ton about forest management and about fire suppression. Uh, again, it was a really great place to live and work for 15 years. Um, about 10 years ago, I moved down to Grand Rapids and uh, had a couple of different jobs in the regional forestry office. Um, first, the assistant regional manager and then the regional forest manager. Um, both those jobs really supporting the seven forestry areas in the Northeast. Um, I spent a little less time outside and I spent a little more time in meetings, um, but it was really rewarding work, making sure that our foresters had all the knowledge, skills, and abilities and tools to do their jobs. Um, about four years ago this month, I took on a new role as the Northeast Regional Director. Um, this current job, I guide our staff and supervisors in the Northeast to work together to achieve the department's mission. My work is across all of DNR's divisions. Um, we have about somewhere between 700 and 1,300 employees up here in the Northeast, um, depending on the season. But I also do a lot of outreach with some of our really important partners, like Crow Wing County. Um, I've got nine counties in the Northeast that I try to work with, um, but also work with federal agencies and tribes um, other state agencies, various stakeholder groups. I report to the commissioner's office. My boss is Deputy Commissioner Barb Miramore. So you can also think me, of me as um, kind of a contact locally with the commissioner's office. Um, I'm kind of the eyes and ears and sometimes the voice of the commissioner's office in outstate Minnesota. And uh, I don't get to go outside much at all anymore for work. Um, actually, since COVID, I don't go anywhere for work. I uh, work out of my home office, and my coworker there behind me, Jake, um, uh, keeps me company. So the area in light blue is my work area, and uh, that's the northeast nine counties of the state. And I'd like to um, tell you a little bit about each of our divisions and the work that they do. I'll start off with enforcement. Um, besides giving tickets for not registering snowmobiles like my dad got uh, many decades ago, they do a lot of other important work. They enforce fish and game laws. They participate in search and rescue. Uh, they do firearm safety training and do some train the trainer trainings in that area. Boat and water safety programs. They have agreements with local law enforcement, uh, like county law enforcement, the state highway patrol, and others to carry out roles that require a licensed peace officer. Um, the last year, they've had a lot of, of extra duties related to um, demonstrations. 
uh, political candidate security, civil unrest. Um, a lot of our conservation officers probably didn't sign up to do that work, but uh, they've been helping out in a lot of different areas and we really appreciate it. Um, Ecological and Water Resources Division is, uh, is probably our broadest division. They have 38 distinct programs. And uh, I'll mention a handful that you're maybe more familiar with. There's water permitting and hyd hydrologic monitoring. Uh, there's our dam safety program, aquatic invasive species. Uh, environmental review is housed in the EWR division. Um, Non-game wildlife, so if you like to watch the Eagle Cam, or if you do the uh, annual volunteer loon survey like I do. Uh, Lake Superior Coastal Program. Would you believe that Lake Superior is actually considered a coast? Uh, and then the land units that Ecological and Water Resources manages are called SNAs or Scientific and Natural Areas. And they help us preserve some of Minnesota's ecological and geological diversity. Uh, the Fisheries and Wildlife Division, of course, monitors populations and manages through harvest regulations. They're responsible for research and animal health programs. Um, you're well aware of that with the, the CWD find a few years ago. They manage habitat and operate fish hatcheries for stocking programs. Uh, they take creel surveys and work in recruitment and retention. They work with the public and with stakeholders. And the land units that they manage are wildlife management areas, or WMAs, and aquatic management areas, or AMAs. The division I'm most familiar with um, from working in forestry for 22 years is the forestry division. Uh, we manage 2.5 million acres of state forest land and are responsible for timber harvest as well as regenerating the forest. Uh, wildfire response in the state that's been keeping us a lot busier this year than normal. And we work on out of state fires when needed. Uh, they manage forest insect and disease problems as well as terrestrial invasive species and they help private forest landowners manage their lands. Uh, the land units that forestry manages are called state forests. Uh, Parks and Trails Division is our division of fun. Uh, they develop boat ramps on inland lakes and small craft harbors on larger lakes. Uh, in normal non-COVID times, they have a series of outdoor skills programs called I Can, uh, like I Can Camp, I Can Fish, I Can Paddle. Uh, Etc. They uh, manage our state trails like the Paul Bunyan Trail and of course they manage our state parks and uh, I was just down in your neck of the woods and camped at Crowing State Park a few weekends ago. It's uh, lovely. Um, the Lands and Minerals Division is, is kind of two somewhat distinct buckets of work. Uh, the lands part of the division manages our real estate transactions. So our acquisitions, our sales, leases, exchanges, utility licenses. Uh, the mineral side is responsible for mineral mapping across the whole state. They manage our drill core library. That photo in the bottom left is, is a picture in our drill core library. Those are um, about two to three inch uh, drill cores that have been uh, extracted from all over the state. They're also the trustee for the mineral rights assets of lands that DNR manages with intact mineral rights. And they're also the trustee of tax forfeit mineral rights. So they would uh, um, help Crow Wing County if there were, were minerals to be uh, extracted. They also manage about a million acres of severed school trust mineral rights. So that's our divisions, um, but we also have a lot of diverse partnerships, again, with other levels of government. We have a lot of constituents in the public that are interested in our work, and we work with a lot of special interest groups, and it's pretty hard to make everybody happy. Um, there's a lot of public land in the Northeast region. Uh, it's not all DNR managed. 
Um, there's federal land, the Superior National Forest, Chippewa National Forest, the Voyagers National Park, and many of the counties, like Crow Wing County, also manage uh, tax forfeited land. All these lands together um, provide a lot of benefits to both residents and visitors. We are trying to be a little bit smarter about our land portfolio through our uh, Strategic Land Asset Management Program, or SLAM. Our goal with SLAM is to make strategic decisions about uh, potential acquisitions, as well as good calls about divesting of lands that don't fit our portfolio. Um, we use a standard decision-making framework, and we're committed to working with our partners like Pro Income. We recently updated our SLAM goals, and I'll just walk through those quickly. Um, the first is to increase close to home outdoor recreation opportunities. And so that's to provide those opportunities closer to larger population centers. Um, that, that need has been very evident over the last uh, year, year and a half with COVID. Our, our resources that are close to the Twin Cities have just been um, loved to death. Um, the second is to protect significant and rare natural resources. Third is to protect and restore water resources, and that can be both water quality and water quantity, uh, to mitigate and adapt to climate change, to expand access to our existing land holdings. And while that might involve an acquisition, um, it's also can happen with easements or exchanges, so it's not always with acquisitions. Um, finally, the last one is to consolidate our land ownership, creating larger contiguous blocks of DNR lands. Um, and sometimes that also results in larger contiguous blocks of um, county administered lands, federal lands, et cetera. And again, that's not just acquisitions, but just as often as, as sales or exchanges. Some of our ongoing work in SLAM is a land sales and process improvement project. Um, it's our, our continuous improvement project around our sale process. Um, one, one recent thing that we uh, did here was for the first time, we offered some land parcels on uh, internet auction. Uh, the state of Minnesota has an internet auction website called MinBid um, that we were already selling some of our surplus vehicles and four wheelers and things. And uh, a few years ago, we got statutory authority to offer land sales on the internet. And um, out of the five parcels we sold, which were all offered last fall without selling, uh, four of the five sold. So we're really excited about that uh, new tool that we have in land sales. We're also, uh, you know, building, working to build stronger relationships um, with partners, and that that includes uh, some of the conservation groups, that includes county boards. Um, just trying to to build better re relationships so we know each other when we have work to do together. We're trying to do um, better communication internally. DNR is a really, really big agency. And sometimes, quite honestly, our left hand does not know what our right hand is doing. So we're trying to talk to each other about uh, land acquisitions and transactions a little more so we know what each other is up to. Uh, and then we're working on some county snapshots. Uh, I had brought uh, an early version of uh, one of these to you a few years ago. Um, and we're working on an update to this. Um, this is just kind of some facts and figures about VNR in Pro Wing County. Our uh, newer version will have uh, a map and, and some additional uh, news and, and highlights. Um, I remember when I shared this with you about three years ago when Tom and I visited um, one of the board members, and I don't remember who, asked, well, yeah, but what's Crow Wing County's share of that tilt, that $587,000? And I was pretty happy to answer, well, all of that is Crow Wing County's share. Um, that, that is Crow Wing County's share. I looked up this year, it was just a little over $600,000. So that's um, the, the money that the state pays to the county um, to reimburse for uh, the property taxes that are not paid on public lands. 
So that brings me to the end of what I brought to share. Um, I'm gonna make sure that you all have my contact information. Um, when you have questions, like I mentioned before, and you don't know where to go at DNR, um, I might not know the answer, but I can usually connect you with the right person who does. Um, I know a little bit about a lot of things. Um, if anyone has questions about the things I have talked about today and, or other DNR topics, um, I would be glad to try to answer them. Commissioner Corning, any Chair. questions? Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Well, uh, Ms. Steelen, I, I, this is Paul Coring, County Commissioner. You said through your presentation many times that you want to work with your partners. I have that you do not work very well with your partners. I'll give you an example right now. Okay, so Lower South Long Lake, uh, there's a dam down here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it to you right now. Here's the dam. Here's the dam. This dam, and you were talking about water quality and water quantity. And there was an article in the Brainerd Dispatch about three weeks ago, and I can't, I couldn't find it this morning, but the Corps of Engineers uh, up in Cross Lake, the, the Gull Dam, they were holding the water back to conserve that. I wanted to do the same thing down here on South Long Lake because it was draining the lake. It was, it was ruining the quality for people that use the lake. I talked to your hydrologist, but no, she was absolutely opposed to having a, uh, a stopper in here to kind of hold the, the level of the water. So, I, you don't know me, but I actually used to be a state senator, so I, I know Bob Myers very well, the assistant commissioner of DNR, and I called Bob and I talked to him. And he was right in the middle of the legislative session trying to get the DNR's budget uh, um, taken care of and he that was on a Wednesday he says I will call her on Thursday and talk to her before he could even call her she ripped this board out of here so that it literally drained the lake out and now I look down here and she's actually if you can see she's actually had a, a metal plate welded in here so that you can't even you can't even put boards in here that's why these these dams were installed to maintain a certain level of the lake the upper lake upper south long actually has a dam there there is boards in there and people maintain that level so i i i have found that you, you talk about working together i think you need to do it you need to work on that because as far as i'm concerned you haven't done a very good job and i i, I thought i was done with the legislature but when i down here and i'm so angry about this i almost feel like running for the legislature and getting on an, uh, the environmental uh, natural resources committee and and be your worst nightmare because i i think there has to be somebody that has to speak for the public and um i i just find i i just think you need to do a better job i if you look at this there is literally no water coming over here it's the the lake is drained out People are moving their docks. Up. They're uh, they're hitting rocks with their. It's just it's a nightmare. This lake is down two feet, which I think we need to preserve the the water that's here. Um, so anyway, enough said. I, I said. Thank Thanks, you. Commissioner. I uh, I apologize that that you don't feel that uh, um, we we've done enough. So clearly, we need to do a little more. Um, I know that we did reach out to the um, lead of the Lake Association. I, I don't recall if his uh, title was chair or president or, or what, um, with some information. Um, the Lower South Long Lake is one of about 300 lakes in Minnesota that are controlled by a lake outlet dam. Um, this is... Sorry, we lost the uh, audio. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, apologies about that. Um, did you hear anything I just said, or should I start back? Um, 
where were where was she? <laughs> one of three hundred lakes. Oh, one yeah, one of three hundred lakes that somebody lakes. controls. Um, so it's called a lake outlet dam. Um, the level of this dam was decided several decades ago um, by people on the upside of the dam, people on the low side of the dam, um, coming to agreement probably wasn't exactly what every, anybody wanted, everybody wanted, um, but it's, it's what they agreed to. And for our, so for, for our hydrologist to allow the dam to be changed, it would actually be breaking the law. And uh, Commissioner Coring, as a as a former legislator, you know you understand how how statutes create our laws, um, and so this is a place where there is a process that could be um, used to take a look at: is this still the right height for the dam, um, or do we want to raise it or lower it? Um, and, and that process is, is available to the local people who are affected. Um, the, the challenging side of it, though, is it involves um, both people on the upside of the dam and people on the downside of the dam. And, and so the people on the downside of the dam are probably less interested in raising the dam because that means they have even less water. So thank you very much, and I know Commissioner Coring is very passionate about South Long Lake and Upper South Long Lake. Um, I think he's probably pretty aware of how, if, if it's in statute, that the process is to go through the state legislature and lobby them for a change. But I, So just so you know, he's passionate about it. Are there other questions for Ms. Thielen? I'm not hearing any more questions. I appreciate your presentation. It's quite a large area that you have a responsibility for, but I applaud you. I, I think overall the DNR does a pretty darn good job. I know there's always water issues out there that cause problems for landowners, but they overall I think you guys do a good job. So thank you very much. And we'll look forward to uh, maybe meeting you in person sometime again. I remember you three years ago and I appreciated you coming directly to us, and hopefully sometime in the future we can have that same meeting. So thank you very much. And with that, we will move on to number three on our agenda, Administrator Houle. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board, when we were putting the agenda together late last week, I thought that we would have time to do a little bit of additional research on this, and we ran out of time. So the issue is not ripe for discussion today. I'd like to ask that you pull it. It's pulled. Thank you. Off the agenda. Anything else that any of the commissioner, I'm sorry, Administrator I'm Wolf? just going to ask if there's any other questions. Commissioner Coring, any more questions for the administrator? <laughs> do, you, do you folks have the right to ride golf carts on the roads down there, Commissioner Coring? <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, we do. <laughs> okay, good to know. And with that, uh, we'll adjourn the Committee of the Whole meeting.